Oh yeah, welcome back, Planeswalkers. Theorx 6, back with some more Magic the Gathering Arena. And first things first, no technical skit today. Uh, instead, we're just going to go really quickly over the correct answer to yesterday's question. My question to you was, what was my favorite guild symbol? Not the guild, but my favorite guild symbol. And a decent number of you were correct. It's the Orzhov symbol. I just love the black gold sun. I absolutely love it. That said, I was going to show you the rest of them. And I do have them in order right here. I was going to show you that, but I figured it would be more fun to actually keep that like contest going. So you all know that the first one is Orzhov. What I want for, for you all to do is comment down below and try to get that full string of 10. What are my favorite guild symbols in order from one to 10? And the first one who does that will get something. Um, I probably will keep doing this. Uh, I'll probably start talking about it at the end of videos instead of the, the beginning, but I'll keep doing this until someone gets it right. And what I also want you guys to, to let me know is what is something that is reasonable uh, that you would be interested in me having as a reward, right? Obviously, I can't, I can't like come to the person's house and say hi, right? That's that's a bit ridiculous. But you know, what is something that you think is reasonable for me to do uh, for someone who's able to guess this string of ten correct? And I might over time uh, show more. Like maybe next time I'll show uh, the last one, uh, so you have a, a beginning and end. Maybe you can get a bit of my taste from that. Uh, but yeah, so that that thing is going to be open, and directly after I get into some games, I'll, I'll talk about who actually uh, was was correct in uh, in their guess. So before that, we're of course going to talk about the sweet promo from fliptopgaming.com. You can use my code six for 10% off on orders over $10. It is truly a great deal and it absolutely helps the channel. Uh, gives gives me some of that sweet, sweet uh, money to keep the lights on. <laughs> uh, anyway, today, since since many people <laughs> were not exactly happy uh, for, for my conduct yesterday uh, in which I played a control deck in a creature-based event <laughs> and i expected i expected to get a bit of hate so you know it's not unwarranted at all i think it's totally reasonable today we're playing a suggestion by one of the patrons ms boom uh we are playing angels now we're playing essentially four color angels because i wanted to i wanted to play with shalai and i wanted to play with seraph and i want to play with aurelia so we're playing angel tribal this essentially is meant to just be a mid-range deck that has a bunch of angels and that, that that's pretty much it we of course are running three duress we control seems to be one of the harder uh, matchups for us, so being able to actually like duress things out of control hands is really nice. And even the non-control decks have things that we can get with duress. So totally reasonable card to have in the uh, the sixty if you're playing best of one, in my opinion. Three founder renewals. We're a slow deck. It's nice to get some life. Uh, it also draws, which is helpful. Uh, that's the reason I'm running this instead of something that's just like a moment of craving or something, because we do have access to board wipes, and instead of just Focusing on, like, single target removal for these really low-to-the-ground decks, I figured I would have found, found Renewal instead, since those also work against control. Now, of course, the numbers may be a little off. Maybe I shouldn't be running this. I should be running something else. But, yeah, this is what it is for now. For Tide Takers, this card is just very helpful. Um, what I really like to do is, against control, if you know they have uh, one counter spell up, and or you, you know that they have the possibility of one counter spell up, you can cast this before you cast one of your other uh, uh, angels. And if they decide not to take the bait and they don't actually counter Tithe Taker, then you can play the angel because Tithe Taker makes their spells cost more. And if they do counter Tithe Taker, then you can play an angel, right? So this is a very helpful card uh, early against um, Aggro decks. You can block early and uh, get a nice token. For Resplendent Angels, this is, in my opinion, kind of the backbone of the deck, seeing as the fact that uh, it comes down on three, which is very helpful. Uh, it's it's just, you know, a nice, decent flyer, three mana, three, three. Uh, and if you are able to gain life, usually just by activating her ability, you will be able to get a, a sweet Sarah Angel out of it, which is very nice. One Mortify. You might be saying, why one Mortify? That's because I'm not super sold on the removal suite of this deck. And actually, I'll throw this over here, because this is kind of the removal suite of the deck. I'm not entirely sure on it, and I could be wrong, but I, I feel as if a single Mortify is okay, uh, splitting that with two Ixalan's Binding for single target removal. We have a lot of creatures, a lot of creatures in this deck. Uh, and the reason for that is because I wanted to play Angels. <laughs> so we didn't have a ton of room for removal. We could theoretically cut down on a find. We can cut down on, you know, the Fountain of Renewals instead and run more um, actual removal. But this is what I have for now. And it's, it's been working out relatively well. The two excellence binding very helpful at dealing with planeswalkers and stuff. And this will deal with creature or enchantment. Three deafening clarions are meant to help us against a lot of the aggressive strategies. Um, it also can allow us to instead just, you know, have a resplendent angel and like a shalai out and, you know, give our creatures lifelink and we can attack in. It's, you know, all hobble blue and gain some life and stuff. 
But uh, very helpful against those those low to the ground strategies. You could, since we are running, you know, four colors, you could theoretically run Cry of the Carnarium instead. Um, but I like the the ability to to have that three that three damage as well because it can hit things like um, Goblin Chain Whirler, the uh, Banalish Marshal, things like that. So that's that's why I like that. Two Shalai and two Aurelia. The only reason they are two, the, this is a two two split, is because they're both legendary, right? I don't want to get stuck. I don't want to get uh, my hand with with either of these stuck in hand, right? Uh, so that's why we're running that. Shalai, very helpful, can deal with Settle the Wreckage. It also makes it so that it protects all of your other angels. Uh, and for what it's worth, you can use her ability. And yes, technically that is the only real reason green is in this deck, other than, you know, you can cast Finality if we need to. But for the most part, it's it's, it's just for it's just for the, using the ability. <laughs> and then of course, Aurelia is just a super fun card. Can buff up your other angels, which is often very helpful. For example, it can buff up your Lyra's to get even more life out of her, uh, as well as having it get Vigilance. Or she can just buff up herself, and then she can work to like make Resplendent Angel bigger, which is a little bit helpful. But yeah, overall, she's just a decent 4-mana uh, play, because she's a 2-5, so relatively hard to kill uh, by herself. And she can give herself plus 2 Trample and Vigilance, so she can become a 4-5 flyer that can attack and still block. So I think she's very helpful. Then 3 Seraph Scales. Kind of the best of these because she's not legendary and she makes two creatures when she dies, which is very nice. Uh, also, she can she can get Death Touch, which is come in handy. Well, I still died that game, but it did come in handy. Um, then of course three Lyras. Lyra is a legendary creature, but we want to, Lyra will die. We want to cast as many Lyras as possible. And three cards that I'm so like glad I was able to kind of shove in here because I absolutely love Vanquish Commander. Right? I played this card since like close beta or whatever. Um, and it's just a, a, a ton of fun. Being able to get value off your angels is going to be very helpful since your angels are kind of slow, right? So you want to be able to um, get some some value recoup there, especially if you're running up against control, where they're likely going to be able to have single target removal that matches your ability to only really play one angel a turn. So this is very helpful. And of course, find finality gets us two angels back, which is usually helpful. And uh, finality, I've actually had to use in the game. And if you're able to finality something like Resplendent Angel, you can very quickly just use Resplendent Angel to end the game because I believe I got her... Yeah, so she became a 4-4 naturally. And then I would plus the ability and make her a 7, a 7-power seven creature that gave that had lifelink. So it was really easily uh, really easily able to steal steal the game. This is our mana base right now. So as you can tell, we're really low on green. We're the lowest on green. So what I've done here is I've given myself no basics for green. And then all of the shock shock and checks have to produce white mana. If they don't produce white mana, they're not in the deck. Because as you can see, the majority of the deck is based around white. Uh, I believe the only two cards are Duress and Find that don't immediately work with uh, with white, but everything else does require white, so that's that's what I decided to do. I don't know if it's perfect, but it's it's what I have. Now, I should say that I was unable to play a large number of games for uh, practice because I had the D&D session, which should today be uploaded to Merchant's channel, so definitely check out uh, youtube.com slash merchant if you haven't already. Uh, to see me and them play some sweet uh, Dungeons & Dragons. It's a ton of fun. Now here, we do get to go first, but we have to choose. Do we have Duress on turn one and have a slow Tithe Taker start, or play a Tap Land and then Tithe Taker? Um, I think I would prefer to Tithe Taker, so have a Tap Land and then Tithe Taker, and then Duress on a subsequent turn in which I can weave in um, one of my Tithe Takers. Potentially, I should say. Blue, okay. So I think that plan has gone out of the water because I need to make sure they don't have a Cure Subsession. Okay, they don't. Spell Pierce, I don't actually care because I can play around that. Dive Down, I also don't care because I don't have removal. So I think I'm just going to get rid of Charter Course. Chart of Course, because that's only the only thing that really helped them there. So, you know, I think that's a reasonable play. This turn we can play Tithe Taker. And unless they've drawn exactly Essence Capture, we should be good. Cool. So, the I believe the first person who won... Don't tell me you actually drew Essence Capture. Okay, cool. Um, the first person, I think, to have got it was Dark Hunter. I think it was 96. Uh, they were the first person, I believe, who commented that it's Orzov. So, uh, yay. <laughs> I, I don't really know what to, to say other than congrats. Um, other people who, who got it correct. And some of these, of course, have been around the channel so long that they kind of were naturally going to. Hmm. I'm going to play Seraph of Scales. Dive down. But I'll have Death Touch by then. Yeah, I think I'm just going to... Seraph of Scales... And not block the first time. So that I can have Death Touch up. 
I think that's the plan. Um, Angelic Dirt, Sage Mars, Grimmy, Kevin, Merze, Verithus, Dopey, Dopey Dopes, I think, and Ashrin. All of you uh, guessed correctly. So I don't, I don't think I block here because of the fact that my opponent can just dive down and I lose my Seraph. So no blocks. Also, I'm stupid. I forgot to talk about the, the practice games, so uh, allow me to pull this back up here. Uh, let's see. So, Spell Pierce and Dive Down. Hmm. So, I really want to have Seraph up, like to hold, so I can give her Death Touch. So, I think what I can do is... No, 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 no. This... And do I want to Fountain of Renewal, or do I want to attack with Seraph of the Scales? They could triple block me? How likely is that? I think I would rather just play out the Fountain for right now. Oh yeah, they're... they're... Oh, I'm so dumb! No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Um, right now, their Spell Pierce costs... Um, it did cost three, because I had both of these. Alright, so that gets larger. Let's see if they decide to attack. Yep, they do. I will, I'm will. i totally fine taking that, that damage. Or, taking the block. Block here. Let's see if he chooses to dive down. Yep, I'm totally fine with that. Death touch, thank you. Dive down all you want. So luckily for me, my opponent is in kind of a trash position. In that, they don't have a ton going on. Resplendent. I think Shalai is better. Yeah, I think Shalai is better. Do I attack with Tithe Takers? I might as well. Yeah, might as well. They can't block. I, I mean the Tithe Takers can't block. Just, just so you know. Uh, sure, shall I? Cool. So we only played four practice games with Angels. We won two and lost two. Uh, the first one was a loss against Jeskai Control, and that was when we had a, a little bit different of a setup. Uh, so we didn't have the main deck dresses and stuff like that, and we just kind of slowly died, really. Um, that was one of the big reasons I decided to put in uh, those dresses was because it seemed like we really had no real action against uh, Control. Oh, right, before before we put in the duresses, we ran to Kaliana Guard. That's what it was. We're going against Professor Farnsworth. I love it. Um, This hand is really close to playable. Uh, we run 24 lands, but... Uh, I don't know if I can justify this. Feel free to comment down below on whether or not you keep this hand. Going first. Uh, sure, I'll keep it. I'll keep it in hope. Uh, second game was against Orzov. I don't know if it was... Uh, give a give a nice hello. Don't know if it was Vampires or Life Gain or what, because it was, it was kind of nebulous. Um, but we did end up winning that game, because our Angels are awesome. Okay, so this is Mono Green. Not great. Even worse. Alright, I made a mistake. Uh, note to self. Don't keep two landers with this deck. <laughs> Should I count that? Yeah, I'll just put it down as a turbo concede. <laughs> Next up was Is It Drakes, and I crushed them. Horribly. Um, that was the game where I used Finality. Uh, I also used Defting Clarion early on to kill... Uh, I think it was two Goblin Electromancers. It was, uh, it was a pretty good game for me. And then I... Like, they played a Crackling Drake on four, and I... I want, the, I want this. I want to keep this hand, though. <laughs> We're going second. We're keeping this hand. Shut up. We have two playables. Uh, I, I never learn. I never learn. All right. So I'll play this tapped. And then... I assume they're mono-white. Okay, they're white-green. So sort of Lesnia. Yeah, I assume that we're going to play something here. So I don't think Duress at this point is going to help me too much. I don't care about that card at all. 
So I think it is just better for me to go ahead and play a Tithe Taker into a Resplendent. Yeah, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, the Isidrake uh, went, went perfectly, honestly. Then we went against... Um, went up against Gates, and I kept a hand that had two Deafen Clarions. Needless to say, those cards were worthless. I will block. I'm fine with that trade. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that trade. I have a, I have a flyer. Alright, uh, I drew all of my Vanquisher's banners. So as long as we can get those down at some point... This could die, but... Oh uh, yeah, so uh, we kept we kept a bad hand, and honestly, we almost won that game. But we just drew too poorly. Oh, I drew a land, hell yeah, bro, bud. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Temple Garden untapped. Binding the Shalai. It's possible Binding Shalai is incorrect, but I want to attack. So next turn, if we draw an untapped source, I will probably play Vanquisher's Banner. If not, Duress is totally fine. Nine of Autumn to blow up my Exxon's Binding. Fudge. Oh, I can no longer Duress my opponent. Fudge. Yeah, that, that's not good. And the Seal Away. Because they, they had one as well, of course. All right, Seraph's skill is not bad. It gives me something to do. I don't know. This this could not. No, this is this is probably not. This is probably not gonna do very well. Why did you not attack? I literally can't cast duress. Um, Lyra can attack with impunity. I mean, I guess I can play this. Pass the turn, I suppose. Damn. That that July into Night of Autumn was crippling. Absolutely crippling. I feel like my camera's too low, too high. There we go. Pass the attackers, I assume they're just going to attack with Lyra. So I'm going to Mortify. Mortify and Shalai is okay. It's not great. See, that's that's an interesting attack to me. Because I'm absolutely going to block this. Pass the first strike damage. Death touch. Huh. Alright. Alright, that's strange. I'd... I can duress them now, but it's not like it's going to matter. Oh, good. Alright, we're getting out-angeled. Um, I mean, I can play my Vigritus Banner. I, I, have, I have no idea what they have in their hand. It could honestly just be a creature, so I think it's correct to just do this. <laughs> do I name Spirit? No, I don't think so. Go down to three. Founder Renewal is not helpful. I am dead. I wonder what they had. Yeah, nothing. Uh, okay, we got we got crushed there. Is there anything I did wrong? No, I think we just lost. <laughs> You know what? There we go. I can't wait to just hit nothing but aggro. And just lose. Once again, been getting a bit of comments about the nails. I just painted them. Not this hand, this hand, but... Okay. Iceman LWJ. 
I don't know the records. Oh, this is not a great hand. I mean, it has, it has stuff, it just has no creatures. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I only play fourteen creatures? What the fuck? I have to be missing something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I play eighteen, okay. Stomping ground. I guess I'll have this entered tab. Of course we drew more lands, which is unfortunate. Okay, well they didn't have anything, so that is helpful. So we'll go ahead and chapel, found a renewal. Next turn we'll have Mortify up, following followed by Seraph of Scales. Mortify can help against a uh uh, enchantment thing. I wonder what they're playing. I mean, I might as well get all my men out. Why not? For what it's worth, I can just use Founder Renewal here. Should I? I'm not sure. Play something I'm giving up on you. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and draw. I don't need his land. My opponent very well could have Lava Coil. I legitimately have no idea what their... What this deck is. Oh, it's one of these! Alright, they have no removal. Um, so I could just... Bot... They probably have Thrashing Brunet on, actually. So I think what I want to do is play out this Cliff Top, play out this Tithe Taker, Mortify the Nikia. I should I, I should make a Nikia deck, shouldn't I? All right, that is that is a uh, on the on the list of things to do. So what I that I still need to finish Illusion Tribal. Uh, I still need to rework the Goblin Infinite Dagger deck. A lot of decks running running through a lot of decks. <laughs> Phoenix, I can binding that. I have I have uh, way too many lands. One, two, three, four, five. I've drawn five real cards. And what is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, nine lands. So I kept a. Did I keep a four land hand or a three? Uh, uh, no, it hasn't been a four land hand. Do I attack with Tithe Taker? No, I guess not. I guess I could have kept her up, but whatever. They're dead in, hopefully, three turns. Um, yeah, so I kept a, a, a hand that had Binding, Mortify, and Fountain. So I drew these two cards, and everything else was... Uh-oh. Everything else was a land. Okay, I can still attack, because I do have Death Touch. Bruh, come on. That's fine. I would really like to draw some damn non-lands, though. Did I ever do a full... Afterlife Glass deck? I don't think I did. I should do that, too. Put that on the itinerary. So many decks to explore. Pretty certain I'm gonna find nothing. Sure. Man, if only we didn't draw all these lands. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
I'm just gonna play Galta too. Nice. Right. What they get from me? Oh, that's fine. They got a. I'm not gonna concede yet because I want to. I want to see the other land that I draw. I have drawn nearly half of my lands. Half of my lands would be twelve. I'm two lands away from drawing half of my lands. Yeah, Death and Clarion. Damage and lifelink, I assume. What did you get? Oh, tap. Why would you do it in that order? Wrong order. Didn't even give his creatures lifelink. No respect. You know what? For curiosity, let's see what he had. Oh, well, anyone else. We're playing more games. We're playing more games. I'm going to revisit this deck. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to revisit this deck. Don't know exactly how. But I'm going to. If anyone wants to give advice. There are some core things that I can't change. My angel count must remain the same. Or maybe I can drop one Lyra for another, like, a uh, Scales girl. No, apparently I can't have that hand. Uh, sure, this hand's fine, I guess. Uh, nope, I... I, I want to be able to have Lyra, so I guess I'm going to keep that, and then I'm going to be sad. Uh, I guess I can Mountain first, because I don't have anything else to play. So I can just get the Fountain off? Yeah, I think that's correct. And we're going second, so... Okay, sure. The problem is we're going second, so let's see. They'll have two, Johnny's Pride Mate will be a three-power three card already, so if I was going second, or if I was going first, I'd be able to actually deal with him, Johnny's Pride Mate, but... No Johnny's Pride Mate. It's all good. Saul Goodman. That's a little annoying, but... Yeah. Okay, so this Death and Clarion will hopefully help a bit. More lands. That's totally fine. I only run 24. This is this is the retribution for what I did yesterday. The game is like, I know what you did last summer. I just realized I should be checking my audio quality. Or my audio uh, levels. Yeah, it seems fine. If you're wondering why I'm not as uh, hype and stuff, it's because I just finished recording D&D for three hours. <laughs> so... Little text. Also, I haven't eaten dinner yet, and it's like several hours past when I usually eat dinner. So, good clarion this board, but that would only get rid of like one creature. I will clarion this board. 100%. You make my dreams come true. Ooh, 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 ooh. What you want, I've got to have it. I, I think that's the lyrics I don't actually know. I'll make my dreams come true. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, so I can serve scales into Lyra. You might say my opponent has been mana screwed, but they're playing mono white. That deck doesn't always run a ton of lands. So we'll go ahead with the Seraph. And then the following turn we'll play a Lyra and gain a bit of life. Some <laughs> terrible accent. I'm going to offend everyone with my accent. Uh, Pride Mate I am fine with. Because I do have Death Touch Angel. Do I attack or hold back both? I legitimately don't know the answer to that question. So if they play a creature, they'll get they'll just go to five. And if they play another creature, this will go to six. Or they don't even have to play another creature, sorry. They play a creature, this goes to five, and then at combat, this will go to six. So I think I just play Lyra and don't do anything. Because if it just goes to five, if they don't have another creature to play, then I can just block it with this and be done with it. 
Otherwise, I can double block it, and I'll be fine, because I assume they're going to just be able to kill Lyra. And from that, I can go ahead and pl play another Lyra. But it actually looks like they might be um, exiling Lyra with a, with a uh, Conclave Tribunal. Which would be the worst thing for me, I think. Because then that becomes a 4 Yeah, so now my Seraph becomes a 4-4. I guess it's because I had Death Touch. Well, shit. Um... Well, luckily, that doesn't have Trample. So, these will protect me for a bit. Sure. So, it should be okay. Because I can block these pretty easily. Don't really care too much about Healer's Hawk. Huh. That's yeah, fine. Chumperino. I guess I'll duress. Good to know. Good to know. I'm going to go ahead and just do this now. Sure, that is totally not helpful. So now I can kill one of the Healer's Hawks. Might be incorrect to do, but I think I plan on casting Lyra next turn, so I might end up just blocking with Lyra. So I can draw a dang card. Hmm. Sure. I will block with Lyra. Could be incorrect. But I'm functionally just like cycling here. I want to get further in the deck. Yikes. Alright, so this is actually better. I do, of course, now that I, ha I wish I had Lyra on the board still. But this is fine because it does give me something to do. Hopefully she doesn't die again. But I can actually kill this now. As long as Seraph... Uh, okay, looks like Seraph's... Okay, Lyra. That said, my Lyra's bigger. So, that's fine. Yeah, I, I think I'm fine with that. I assume they're not going to attack this turn. All right. Yeah, I was about to say, like, they're, they're double-checking Seraph scales. I can totally make it have Death Touch. Okay, that is what I expected. My turn. So I will go ahead and play Lyra. Draw another card. Sure, Second Foundry is fine. I will go ahead and play Founder of Renewal. Do I want to hold up Sacred Foundry and pretend I have something? I guess. So I will just pass the turn. So my Lyra checks their Lyra. My Seraph checks their Johnny's Pride Mate. As long as they don't have a way to remove either of them, I should be okay. I don't think I've been drawing too many lands this game. Nah. 
They could very well just be biding their time. Or they could, ooh, they could be waiting until they get an indestructible card. The uh, Unbreakable Formation, I think is what it's called. But for right now, I'm totally fine. I can use Founder of... No, ooh, Duress. Don't mind if I do, actually. Sure. So I will go ahead and use Founder of Renewal, and I just want to make sure that it doesn't actually take away the men I need. Ooh, shall I? Don't mind if I do. I get to draw a card, and my other creatures are no, no longer going to be able to be targeted. So that is very helpful. So once again, though, I do have to just pass the turn. I can't reasonably attack with Lyra. Resplendent. Fair. Fair. So, so many angels running around right now. Johnny's... Okay, I am dumb. I did just... Re Why would you... How much did they gain? They gained one, two, three, four. I think you need to gain more than that. Alright, I'm gonna gain a bunch of life. All right? am I dumb? They played one creature. So it was one, two, three, four. Yeah. Not bad. Oops. Messed that up. White, white, red. Resplendent. We lost. We lost one angel deck. We beat another angel deck. Yeah. Store. The, the packs. And let's pop one open. Team Unity Tuesdays, let's crack open a cold pack. Yo, Dan. Daniel Gle Giesling. He responded to my tweet. I would really like to play a game of Arena with him. Man, that would be insane. Of course, I am a nobody. And he's Dan freaking Giesling. So I do want to really quickly go over the sideboard of this deck. Essentially, these are just some of the cards that I uh, didn't actually make the cut, essentially. So Shin Fire, very helpful early on, and you can scale it really well, uh, but I found that I wasn't running in, uh, like, running against a bunch of low-end creature decks for some reason. I've been run with this deck, I've been running uh, against mid-range strategies as well as control, so I just felt that it wasn't very helpful. Revitalize, once again, didn't run into a bunch of uh, aggro strategies. Scott Liana Guard, not as good as she was. Uh, she's definitely still fine against Sultai mid-range, but when, when that deck isn't necessarily as heavily played as like the aggro decks in this format who don't use those ETBs as much. She's just not as good. Cast down slash moment of craving slash lava coil. All really good two mana removal spells. I found that cast down just doesn't cut it against a lot of the decks I saw. I mean, you could see that, excuse me, there are plenty of legendary creatures that this wouldn't help against. Moment of craving, similarly but different. This can only really deal with aggressive creatures, not really those, those larger mid-range or control enders. Uh, but I didn't come across very many aggressive decks lava coil it's is good but i didn't i didn't want to use it <laughs> uh, i just felt that for one more mana we could get mortified and i just felt that was a little bit better consecrate consume niche uh i would say that this is probably something that's helpful in the sideboard because of the fact that uh you don't really have the ability to run something like a um watchtower so in order to get rid of something like a Carnage Tyrant, you will be able to use Consume, right? So that's that's one of the things that you can think about. Source of Spyglass, helpful against Control. <laughs> good good sideboard card. Treasure Map, uh, I felt those a little bit too slow. We weren't we're not necessarily a an aggressive deck, but we are still a deck that wants to win with like creatures on the board. So Treasure Map just isn't conducive to that style. Raid and Destiny uh, felt that we didn't have enough creatures to justify playing a three mana enchantment because it would take up space that our three mana removals uh, occupied. So. Also, the Vigilance isn't necessarily as helpful, uh, just because of the fact that uh, we're going to be gaining life a lot of the time, so it's, it's like, what? Cry the Canarium, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, I feel like the minus two is less powerful than the upside of Clarion being able to deal three damage as well as gain you life. There, There's, of course, uh, like, differences, right? So this can hit things like Adanto Vanguard, and it does exile things, which is very helpful against those, like, Golgari decks, but I just feel like um, the deck and Clarion is a little bit better. Settle the Wreckage, as well as Kai's Wrath. Probably good sideboard choices, but for Kai's Wrath, we are still a creature deck. Like, we still plan on winning with creatures, so it's harder to board wipe like that. And then Settle the Wreckage, of course, you can bring in against, uh, like, Golgari midrange and other creature-heavy decks. Breast of Contempt, very helpful against Control as well. 
um, something that we can just exile a creature. It's very helpful. Or, sorry, exile a Planeswalker. And then, of course, Mortal Sun. Probably a good contender for the uh, the control matchups as well. Just being able to shut down a little bit of their win conditions as well as get a lot of nice card advantage out of it is very helpful. And for, like, the first time, uh, the deck itself would actually benefit from the plus one, plus one to a creature. So that's very helpful. Or two creatures you control. Uh, that said, I do, of course, hope that you've enjoyed this. And I would like to thank my lovely patrons, especially Salamander and Croft, for their continued support. If you'd like to join them. In supporting the channel, you can find links to that down in the description below, as well as links to the Discord server where we chat and play games, and a link to the artist's uh, webpage for the thumbnail of this video, because I think that giving credit is is cool. <laughs> anyway, I uh, do hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, go and tap that like button, add a subscription to your main pool, cast a comment in the comment section down below, and pass the turn to the turn end of it to, <laughs> to some of your friends. And until next time, all will be one.